Aaron Eric O'Sullivan preparing to battle for the third time this season. As both accelerate hard towards the Mondello Grandstand for run one, O'Sullivan leads. Early fearless initiation into turn one from both drivers with maximum angle before switching back for the slower turn two. And power can only follow from a safe distance. This small gap extended by Eric earns him a 6-4 advantage heading for run two. The second run with power leading the way is again extremely fast. Through turn one, power stays tight but runs out wide on exit, dipping both rear wheels into the grass. O'Sullivan was correct in order to avoid a similar mistake and as power keeps it together and rejoins the circuit, debris from the rear of the Extreme Autos 180SX sprays the front of O'Sullivan's Corolla, causing Eric's windscreen to shatter. With zero visibility, O'Sullivan somehow manages to navigate the final bend and draws alongside power to await the judge's decision. Unbelievable action again delivered by this pair. O'Sullivan is yet again judged to have been the better of the two and takes another 6-4 and with it a place in his fourth final of the year. So John, yourself and Eric again, he seems to be liking the grass today. Ah, oh, it's unbelievable. I know, playing championships. <laughs> um, I'd say if I went for another run, if it was a rerun or if I got through, I'd say my poor little baby won't be able for another one. She's on the verge of blowing up, she is. You right there, Eric, in a five minute rule? Yeah, um, Johnny threw up a big rock, I went through the windscreen, so we're just trying to get the glass out and I'll drive it out one. Following a day of high-speed action is the two Toyota Corollas of O'Sullivan and McNamara who prepare to battle for the Round 5 final. Minus a windscreen, Eric leads in Run 1, his slight power advantage over McNamara allowing him to open a small gap between the pair as they pass extremely quickly through Turn 1. Both drivers know this circuit extremely well and this shows as both execute perfect runs, the gap established by O'Sullivan enough to take a slender 6-4 advantage into Run 2. As McNamara accelerates hard beginning run two, O'Sullivan remains close. Through the blind first corner, both cars carry enormous speed, and again Eric positions his cartel Corolla for an attack into turn two. Both are very close as they exit Honda corner, and it's over to the ProDrift judges to determine the winner of this round five final. Undisturbed by the lack of a windscreen, local Dubliner Eric O'Sullivan has again displayed consistent faultless driving against the experienced 2006 champion Darren McNamara. Another 6-4 in favor of Flat Eric means that O'Sullivan takes his fourth ProDrift victory of the season. Pair of ups and downs was preparing Ireland's one of a kind Corolla. I've been involved in motorsport for a number of years, uh, preparation side of motorsport really, just running cars, but it was always quite expensive to get involved in. And then I came across drifting, which was pretty accessible at that time, and it was just a case of having a road car, a rear wheel drive road car, and you could go down and um, pay up and go out for the day and compete. I started competing in motorcycle trials from a young age, about 14 years old. And then as soon as I started driving, really, at 17, I started getting into cars, tuning road cars, but never got a chance to drive, really, until I got into drifting myself. And the cars initially is what attracted me to it. Um, seeing the DVDs from Japan, seeing the cars, the way they're prepared, um, they looked really well. And then the control side of it as well, it wasn't all about how much money you had or what sort of budget you had for you. It was just down to driver skill. My first A86 came along in from Japan at really good money, and it was mint, it was really clean. And I just went from there, really. Once you drive an 86, I don't think you can really uh, have as much fun as anything else. Yeah, I went from that then to this car here, which was originally a 20 valve engine with a bit more horsepower, and it was stripped out of a roll cage, which was very competitive. I found that no problems in Ireland whatsoever. But as soon as I went over to the UK and competed in Silverstone, places like that, it just uh, it didn't have the power you'd need. Since I started driving, I've been into Hondas. Always have had Hondas. Uh, just love the engines and the revs that they have naturally from the factory, like without any tune, they're just screamers. So I'd seen the swap done in the States, just thought it'd be something different and um, a good reliable engine to have. I actually shipped the engine over to Ben and Angelworks. He got me a Mectronic ECU from Italy, fitted it and sorted the wiring loom and then mapped it on an engine dyno and then chipped the whole thing back. Yeah, I think it was two weeks before Punchestown, we just, we just took it out of the paint shop. I think we painted it over, um, over a weekend. Um, Build it back into it's, it's bought in the workshop and started assembly and about a crew of two or three of us basically assembled the car and 
a week and a half, two weeks. The car started up for the first time that Saturday morning, stuck on the reg plates and, and drove down the nice road down to Punchestown. Just wanted the car to run for the weekend, really. It was inevitable the car wasn't going to handle great, and it didn't really the first few times out, but um, the power was there straight away, right from the off. It was great. It was looking promising, really, from the first couple of runs. Went there for qualifying. Um, first run went down grand, second run went out, and there was smoke from the car, which I think a lot of people thought was tyre smoke, but then just grabbing third gear, coming on to the last bend, sure enough, the oil filter was loose and oil had caught fire off the exhaust manifold, and there was flames coming out everywhere, which I was totally unaware of. Um, and kept, kept it flat really till I saw the marshal's flags and decided to stop and that's when I saw the smoke coming through the floor. No idea now it was going to be something as simple as the oil filter coming loose. For that to happen just, oh, just soul destroying really. I didn't know what to do, I just, just walked back to the pits. I think I even left the car on the track and just walked back to the pits and just sat down for a good long time. It was a case of either be, rush the job and get them repaired quickly, like it was a lot of stripping involved, or just buy a, get a second hand engine and, and get it in for Rose Green. We got to run it around one of the extreme drift series in Venray in Holland. The standard of driving I don't think would be as high in Europe as it is in Ireland. Um, but all the same, it was a new track. Some of the guys there have really well prepared cars. Um, I was expecting to do well, but certainly to win it. Once I got there, it was a, it was a great uh, great feeling to win the first event. You know, it was just it was unreal. A few weeks after Venray, then there was a demo in uh, the uh, Maxi Tuning Show in Porto. Yeah, so the car was shipped down from Belgium again. We flew down to Porto then the weekend, did a two-day demo. Um, in nice weather, it was great, yeah, it was an indoor show and the crowd there were, were nuts, yeah, they loved the Corolla especially, it was just a crazy show. First drivers, I personally, I can't see them in second, maybe third best in the world at this stage, you know, um, I haven't seen it in America last year, to find around the Formula D, spectating, you know, it's nothing that the Irish guys aren't capable of, it's just there's um, a lot more investment over there, the cars are pretty serious, like, and the drivers have huge backing, they, all they really have to do is arrive and drive. Yeah, there's a lot of new talent this year. I think a lot of young drivers have come up now from semi-pro last year and, and have good cars this year as well, which should see them well up there in the top eight, I think, most events. So it, it's going to be uh, it's going to be tough. you still got the, the other guys there, Demi Movie and Mike Dean and the boys. So it's, uh, yeah, it's not going to be easy, but um, I think the car now, as it is, is seriously competitive. Um, I, I really couldn't wait to get it back here. Sorted a lot of issues out in Europe, got a lot of testing with it. So uh, I hope to be all up there.